All right, guys, welcome back to another networking tutorial. This one's going to be very important because I'm going to be covering replication, rep notify, and how to actually set up a rep notify system with dynamically changing variables without having to worry about those weird server inconsistencies that you often see when you don't replicate your variables correctly. So getting right into this, we have a cube and this is just a little set color box actor that I made and essentially what this does is we're gonna cast to the third person character if they go in, into it and they overlap it. Create a linear color and then we're going to set it to a material instance which I've quickly set up down here I think somewhere. Uh, yeah, right here. It's just a material instance of the default male body. But anyway, going into the actual third person character we're gonna set up a couple things and then we're gonna discuss how replication and stuff actually works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a simple event system. So I'm just going to type custom event and make a uh, set color uh, node here. And we're just going to run this on the server. Create a color input. This is a linear color. I'm just going to name it to color. Spell with an R. So anyway, once we have our set color node, I'm just going to copy this and paste it. And we're going to use this as a multicast. And this is our basic setup. Now I want to explain before we get into anything. When you use this setup, when you have an execution on the server and an execution on all, if you're going to do this, which I'm actually going to be calling the multicast through here, if you're going to do this at all, you need to ensure that the actor that you're doing it on is owned by the server. Now, by default, the third person character, um, the player characters, player controllers, player states, etc. These are all things that are owned by the server. And you can also set other actors to be owned by the server as well. But to make things easy, what I always do is I just personally work in the player character or the player state or just the player controller. Typically, that's where all the net logic, at least for me, happens. But anyway, I wanted to get that out of the way before we start because this event will not run at all if the server does not own the actor which you're trying to run the event on in the first place. All right, so this is all fine. We need to make sure that we're running this event, though, from here. I'm just going to go ahead and call the set color event really quick. I'm going to split the struct pin and just plug these in so it's just randomizing the color every time you enter the box. Uh, and then once the third person character does enter the box on the server, it's going to multicast a color down to every single client. Now this is where we start to talk about relevancy. Relevancy is basically the way servers communicate things down to clients if those things are relevant to the clients. So an example of something that's irrelevant to a client is a client who's farther away from an object, and we're going to set up our distance system in a second here. Or this is the most common example. If you haven't actually logged onto the server yet, obviously you're not going to be able to get any of the data that's set with this node, because this node could be called before you log into the server. So we actually need to set up an onRep function. So this is super easy. You just promote this to a variable, and I'm just going to name it color. I'm going to compile and save, and this just sets a variable. Do not set this to replicated, set it to rep notify. And when it sets to rep notify, you can actually double click this node. And then when this is set and when this variable is replicated, you can have it run a function. So I double click and I get this on rep color. So this function will run every time a client logs in and starts to see you or you become relevant. So we're going to set up our relevancy system now uh, with a basic net call distance and I don't know why, but the engine squares this. So I'm going to get my calculator real quick, and I'm just going to use 1,000. Just go ahead and square that, copy, and then paste. So there's our call distance. That's 1,000 Unreal units. Now what that means is when we get farther away from other players in the map, they'll actually just disappear completely because they become irrelevant, and, and we'll see how that works. I'm going to hold control and get that color value, and then we're going to set this mesh's material based on that color. So go ahead, create a dynamic material instance. Uh, our source material is the MI man, which is this, the thing that I made earlier. Um, gonna plug this in, and on the return value, we can set a vector parameter. And we know that our vector parameter is called body color because that's just the parameter that's in the material instance. And we're setting it to this value. So what we should see now when we actually run our game is a proper use case for rep notify. I'm going to create two clients and make sure these are set to play as client. And we're going to have two players spawn into the world. And I'm going to have this guy go all the way over here where that guy becomes irrelevant. 
Now if you watch, he just completely disappeared. Where'd he go? Well, he is right here. Uh, we've both completely vanished on each other's screens because we are now irrelevant because I'm over a thousand Unreal units away. I'm going to go into my little box here and I'm going to change my color to something a little bit more vibrant. So like this is orange. I'm going to go run over to where that other guy is at. And once I get close to him, I should appear and there I am and I'm orange. So this means when I'm loading into his screen, that function that was normally ran when I overlapped this box, that function is never going to run because I'm not overlapping that box. But since I have that color stored in my character, when I become relevant to the other guy, when he can see me, I just automatically turn orange. And this is a really good way for testing when players actually log into the server because your net call distance is usually set to an astronomically high value. So this is a good way to simulate when they actually log in what they can see and what they can't see. So that's pretty much the idea of um, rep notify. I would like to go in and actually show you what happens if we don't use rep notify. I'm actually just going to copy and paste. I'm actually just yeah, I'm just going to cut it. I'll just cut it and paste it right here. Just use a replicated variable instead, and then plug everything in the same way we did before. What this does is it's kind of broken. And this is kind of the issue that I've always had with my uh, sync issues. So if you watch, everything is fine. Everything's replicating, and, and that's that's great. That's just perfectly fine. Now, I am a blue man. Keep in mind, I am a blue man. <laughs> I'm going to walk over here, and then I should become irrelevant, and then I'll disappear, and then I come back into the scene, and what happens is, there I am. I'm not blue anymore. And this is always something that frustrated me until I actually looked into how Rep Notify actually works. And there's a couple of my tutorials on this channel that I haven't actually done this in, so I need to go back and make sure that I'm explaining the rep notify process because I've just never done it before. But this is extremely important to understand, and it makes the whole development process so easy once you actually do understand it and recognize how it works. Anyway, thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. I hope this video helped you. I'm still baffled by the concept. But anyway, leave a like if this helped you, and I'll see you in the next one.